ndi wakaipa Akasia ini marimpenyu Akasia ini marimpenyu Mazi baba enyu ndi wakaipa Mazi baba enyu ndi wakaipa Wakaipa Akasia ini marimpenyu Akasia ini marimpenyu Mazi baba enyu ndi wakaipa Because with regard to uh, the law of gravity we are told that the calculation of this law of gravity is by the square of the distances uh, between the bodies and uh, their mass or uh, that in other words if you want to calculate uh, this force of gravity in a celestial uh, calculation it will be m1 multiplied by m2 over r2 in other words mass 1 multiplied by mass 2 divided by the distance between them so which means uh, the heavier the body uh, and the less the distance so the the more it is to go uh, closer to a heavier a body now so when it comes to the issue of the sun and uh, in the case of the sun and of the planetary systems generally the mass of the central body enormously exceeds that of any of his planets according to the heliocentric teaching the sun is 99% or uh, 99.9% of the mass of the solar system of our solar system at uh, this milky way where we are and now for example uh, the sun is 1040 times as heavy as jupiter the heaviest of the planets now i want to show you the structure of the planets according to the ball earth or heliocentric philosophy uh, when we look at the at the planets that we have we've got the sun which is massive 1047 times greater than one of the largest uh, planets around it but unfortunately we got uh, mercury which is closest to the sun but is not into the sun we've got venus which is closer to the sun but not in the sun we've got earth our earth which is near and closer to the sun but not into the sun the reasons why these are not being absorbed or attracted into the sun has baffled almost all astrophysicists astronomers and scientists and anyone who has uh, decided to think about this rather than following what newton and what other scientists says then we've got jupiter after mars which is the biggest of all the planets but it's far from the sun it, the order was supposed to be jupiter certain and 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 the earth and the uranus and all like that but they are not like that they are actually arranged in any uh, disorderly manner according to the heliocentric pictures that we see so all scientists commit only to the truth and pretend to only follow the truth and only work with the facts but i've just given you this this other this pictorial effect which scientist cannot answer which Einstein cannot answer any genius you show this cannot answer vis-a-vis -vis Newton's ideas of gravity now we all know that they only pretend we all know that they think they are correct because Newton in cosmology explained something in that manner um, therefore if ever this has been if ever this is disproved it will mean that uh, the basis of all physics is false then if you think that what we are trying to do is to discredit honorable men and women on earth who have thought out this and calculated and given us mathematics on this please follow us in this video and follow us to our reasoning and uh, experiment and observe as we shall show uh, in this video at school and throughout we were all taught and uh, told that mass pulls the universe and the mass holds the universe together and uh, that mass was very critical and important in the formation of the universe specifically in the formation of the solar system and when we ask why we are always told that about 400 years ago newton discovered that mass produces gravity by structures pulling each thing to it to each to themselves or pulling each thing together and that uh, gravity is that glue that makes us stick on the earth and that gravity uses mass 
to glue the universe. And the question now is, as we have already indicated initially, if gravity is, gravity is so powerful, why is it that it allows a butterfly to fly? It allows uh, small uh, ants uh, and insects, fireflies, mosquitoes. Look at the mosquito. It defies gravity. And uh, uh, how come gravity is so selective? Is gravity like a magnet? Is gravity a force? Or gravity is a myth? Think about this that I have just said. All the while, nature appears to use a completely different system that does not even come closer to resemble Newton and the scientists. Now, look at the picture of the planets that I have shown, that I am showing here. Look at the picture of the planets vis-a-vis -vis the, vis -vis the sun. The sizes and their masses are totally at random. And they are all scattered as far as the structural size Urumas goes. They don't follow any laws. The allocation of planets and Newton's mass plays no part in this, cosmo in this cosmic uh, picture. Look at the picture. It shows that planets are in a random order of sizes. And the manner in which planets are distributed has no relationship whatsoever to gravity or mass. So if a law does not apply, to what is of uh, the phenomena that is observed it's no longer a law it's a lie so did newton lie was newton a pure clear cut atheistic scientist no he was not he was a religious fella he was a freemason now now look at this you see the small planets with their lowest mass are close to the sun and the large planets are in the center like Jupiter is in the center, but it is the one that was supposed to be close to the sun because it is heavier. There is no evidence that the mass is playing any role in the formation of the planets. Science knows about this discrepancy. They accept secretly this discrepancy, but they cannot, for the sake of sustaining their heliocentric model, accept the phallus and the falsity of this uh gravity and how gravity controls mass so everything now we look at in the universe is completely round i want to give a proof now an area of thought an area that is so straightforward that ancient egyptians discovered and they gave to the world a mathematical formula that is quite clear that will demolish and destroy gravity vis-a-vis -vis the structure and the shape of bodies it should be related to this uh, mathematical formula it can never be anything else now everything in the universe is roundish it is it, it, everything in the universe look at those planets again mercury is roundish venus is roundish earth is roundish mars is roundish Jupiter is roundish, Saturn is roundish, Uranus is roundish, Neptune is roundish, Pluto is roundish, uh, everything else in the universe is roundish. Listen, I'm not saying spherical, I'm saying roundish, which means it is a circle. And uh, anything that is round has to apply the value of pi. The value of pi. This is a fact of mathematics. And uh, why the Newton science forever tells us that the universe has mass and that we are to use mass? No way in their science or in their mathematics can you find pi being used. No way. Whatever you may study in astrophysics, whatever you may study in Newtonian or Einsteinian uh, science, you can never find the effect of pi playing a prominent role. You see, there are four phenomena, four phenomena that dismantle and remove gravity. And the science pretends to uh, search for planets far outside our solar system. And all the wild science has no idea at all how our solar system functions concerning the structure 
and the shape of the planets found within our solar system that involve a circle and a pie. Therefore, science goes on to ignore nature. Science goes on to teach us fallacies. Science goes on to teach us belief, to believe and to trust Sir Isaac Newton and, and gravity. I want to look and, and to, 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 to consider one book here. Uh, Terafima, uh, uh, written uh, <clears throat> by David uh, Wadlow Scott. And I'm reading on page uh, three here. Say Isaac Newton himself did not even attempt to give proof, even one proof of the truth of gravitation. He considered it only a supposition. Nowhere else did he supply proof. And all the latest NASA and all the scientific bodies that are telling us of the uh, sound wave and the gravitation they had discovered now and proving instant to be correct are all fallacies. They are all not provable. They are all false. But the reason of these pro of the properties of gravity can here is what Newton says uh, concerning uh, gravity. He said, but the reason of these properties of gravity I could never hitherto deduce from phenomena and am unwilling to frame hypotheses about them. For whatever is not deduced from phenomena ought to be called an hypothesis. And no sort of hypothesis are allowable in experimental philosophy, wherein propositions are deduced from phenomena and not made general by deduction. So the famous laws of Kepler, which were once considered to be so helpful and fundamental in establishing the theory of uh, gravity, have all been found to be erroneous suppositions too. This was proved by Professor W. Uh, B. Carpenter, who wrote uh, in October 1880 in the Modern Review, uh, which I will quote here. He says, he took as his guide another assumption no less erroneous vis-a-vis -vis that the masses of these planets increased with their distances from the sun. In order to make this last fit with the facts, he was drawn to assume a relation of their respective densities, which we now know to be utterly untrue. For as he himself says, unless we assume this proposition of the densities, the law of the periodic time will not answer. Therefore, his biographer, Kepler's biographer says three out of the four suppositions made by Kepler to explain the beautiful law he had detected are now undisputably known to be false. What he considered to be the proof of it being only a mode of false reasoning by which any required result might be deduced from any given principle. So he was lying. Kepler was lying, was a liar. And uh, Sir Isaac Newton's gravity is being proved, has been proved, was proved to be a total supposition, a lie to sustain a globular earth. Now, uh, the truth is that gravitation, attraction, cohesion, and all the other scientific names invented were only created to sustain a spherical or globular rotating earth. Uh, they have no proof and the nature can never uh, give them any proof because nature is completely different, does not operate according to the uh, globular earth. It operates according to the uh, flat earth. Anything whose density, anything whose weight, anything whose volume is greater and heavier than the air pressure will drop down to the ground. While anything whose density is lighter than the air around it will rise up to, into the air and uh, comes down slower without uh, any speed. Now, uh, the truth is that uh, the answer that we have given here is that any object which is heavier than air, 
any object which is heavier than atmospheric pressure around around it and which is unsupported by anything else has a natural tendency to fall by its own weight so newton's famous apple that fell on his forehead was heavier than the air around it and it was no longer held to its stock and therefore it fell and dropped to the ground it was heavy the answer to gravity is this anything that is lighter than air will not be attracted to the earth because the earth is a flat body now gravitation is only a lie and a subterfuge and a subtle scientific uh, phenomena employed by Sir Isaac Newton in his attempt to prove that the earth revolves around the sun that is the only reason why gravity seems to be sustained the minute we accept that gravity is only a clever illustration of the ass of hocus pocus science upon which Newton has got his fame and that the earth is actually flat we will know the truth and we will then search out and destroy other fundamentals like uh, a big bang and evolution these three lies gravity a big bang and evolution depend on your acceptance and the belief that the earth is a globe the minute you don't agree to that they all collapse i hope we continue to search out and find these truths goodbye